Right, so this is the picture which you've all got. I have actually drawn up this one, this just that part of the picture on here, okay? And I'm going to start off by just doing a little study. It's not very big, this uh, the area I've got here. It's, hot. it's an A4 piece of watercolor, maybe even a bit less than A4 with the border. And I just thought it would be a good warm up to do a copy of that little piece of, of that uh, image of this by this man, Roland Hilda. It, it, I think he did do it as a watercolor study. And when we were doing it in the class recently, there was a lot of talk about his brush technique and all that. And I just thought, well, it might be valuable for this class to just do um, a little study of this tree. And what we've got here, which we decided was mistletoe, or some people thought it was mistletoe, um, I think he's done it with a sponge. So mm. I have got here this afternoon, and I hope some of you may have Yes. a little natural sponge um, and it's a very useful thing apart from washing things out but to use for as a um, an instrument for applying color and texture so we'll we'll come to that in a minute so have is has everybody got Payne's gray or is there some people that may not have Payne's gray that need to use it paint spray <laughs> Paint oh, spray. spray. Sorry, no, I've only got black. Well, you'll have to use black then and dilute it. I, I will, yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, no, 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 no. I, you I, can I, make paint spray. Yes, with, you can. Go with on, Viridian, The Viridian, um, the Elizarin, and the Ultramarine. No, and, yeah. and Russian Blue. Okay, fine. Well, I'll leave it to you to decide what you do, Carol. Okay. Um, I think the, the only difference between the Payne's Grey is, and you can get a warm Payne's Grey and a cool yeah. Payne's Grey, is there's not quite as dense the colour as black is, that's all. Yes, no, I, I can vaguely remember Payne's Grey, but... Um, and I, yeah, but just don't worry, I mean, for the pain. purposes of today's exercise, either use your black or mix it, whichever you feel happy. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll mix it, yes. Okay. So we start by putting our lines in of where the three lines are. Are you doing, are you doing this one? Yes. Uh, what I was yes. going to suggest was drawing it out lightly. So you've got some indication of the composition on your watercolor paper. Right. And, mm. but you want us to put in sort of indications of the lines of where the horizons are. And so well, on. that, that is, that's my sort of, Okay. horizon I think there which is okay. the top of that hill the brow of the okay. hill and that's the sky up there okay that's a help yeah um yes and then I'm I've got a little blob of Payne's gray here which I put in my palette yeah uh, just you know undiluted and I'm just going to take some of it and make a wash okay. over here <laughs> okay mm. I'm listening. Oh, um, mm. where, where does one start? <laughs> uh, well, I, with your, in your case, I think I would start by drawing in the shapes. I've done that. Now, you have drawn them in. It's the painting, I don't know where to start. Okay, well then I'd get the sky, I'd work from the top of the picture down and I'd get the sky painted in first of all. I'm doing this also. Okay. 
don't know if you can see, but I'm going to make up quite a lot of wash. So I've made a very pale one there. And now I'm, this is my mid one. So I'm going to put some more of that stronger mixture into it. So I've got pale, pale Payne's Gray, a mid-tone Payne's Gray, and then a strong Payne's Gray down here on, in my other palette. So you need to have, a, I would suggest, three washes at least. Okay, and then... And, and I'm going to start with the pale one. So I'm going to take my pale one right the way across this foreground. And then I'm going to use my mid-tone for the tree, which will probably end up having more than one colour on it. Branches from top to bottom as being. Pardon? Do you do the branches from the top to the bottom rather than the other way up? Yeah, well, I, I am, but I mean, whatever you're most comfortable with. I just, I like starting with the tip of my brush and then letting it flatten out. I'm sure it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And also, I think, well, it's again on the principle of working from the top of the composition down, isn't it? Is, is, is that, is that I, didn't, I didn't know about that. Well, yes, yeah, so I think generally speaking, uh, when you're painting a, a landscape, you'd start from the top and work down. Oh. Now, I remember when we were drawing this, we talked about the sunlight coming in from the left, didn't we? It's not very obvious on this black and white printout that there is any light source, but you could, if you wanted to, you could say to yourself, okay, the light's coming from uh, coming from the right, perhaps. So the left hand side of the tree and the left and um, um, yeah, and the smaller branches will be slightly dark and we'll leave it lighter on the on the left hand side. But that won't show until I get my next wash on, the darker wash.
And remember, we don't want edges. So use two brushes if necessary to soften off edges. So we don't have, you know, where one color underneath is dried. You can use a, a second brush to soften it, if you know what I mean. I don't know if you saw me doing that, but. I'm using a little uh, number two for these tiny brushes, the tiny twiggy things that uh, he's got in on here. You know, these little fine branches. It's easier to do them with my big one, big brush. And the other thing is hold your brush when you're doing these little fine ones, hold your brush in the middle and uh, allow the brush to do the work. which I'm drawing. 